Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting week here on what is attempted to be the best sports podcast here on YouTube, Pack the Bank. As always, my name is Cody. I am here joined by my wonderful friends and co-hosts, Aaron and CK. That guy's pretty good at football. Aaron, what do we have on tap today? Uh, a decent amount. Um, we're going to try to run through some Ed Drinkins. We're going to run through the NFL news, talk about a little bit of combine standouts. Jump into Packers Corner. I know you got a little bit you want to go over. I don't think you have two ton much. And then, boy, we got a lot to talk about today for the Panthers. That's Man, all we're, we're going to say. We will, we will talk when we get there. All I'm going to say is it's my last time I'm able to wear it today. So here we go. Let's do this, guys. Let's jump into the edges. Um, all righty. <laughs> um, so with the edge rankings, man, I'm gonna run through these real quick. I'll start at uh, Lucas Von Nas. Uh, I, I think that Derek Hall, Lucas, and Miles Murphy are interchangeable in whatever way you want to put them. It doesn't matter. I'm a little biased. I really like Derek Hall. I think he's gonna be good. But I was kind of debating a lot all night about Lucas and Miles Murphy. Um, but with uh, with Lucas. Um, he, his functional strength is great. He has good flexibility, and his burst and his and he has great burst for his body type. So he, he's going to be a, a good heavy hitting down, you know, punch you in the nose edge, which would be good. Um, the only thing is, is is and this comes, well, his inexperience. He hasn't played very much because of being at Iowa. He come, he came right off the bench, but he played great when he came off the bench. But his and this kind of feeds into the inexperienced part of that is going to be the block recognition. So he's not very good at understanding where the blocks are coming, what what what's being set up around him. So, um, but yeah, I, I think Luke is going to be really good. And he, he tests really good at the combine too. Yeah, um, he did. He looked he looked really good. Yeah, a, a lot of the edges really kind of balled out. Balled out. Yeah, they like out. really, yeah. really. Um, very go up to Derek. Hold on, I want oh, to add yeah. something about Lucas too. Okay, go ahead. Before we move on, uh, what I want to say about Lucas is uh, another like a valuable trait about him is he can play almost every position on the defensive line, whether in a four-three or a three-four. Now he can't play nose tackle. Obviously, he's not like three hundred plus pounds, but he could be your three-four defensive end or your three-four outside linebacker, and that'll you know you, if you can move him around like that, it makes it a lot harder for offenses to be able to actually block him or another one of your pass rushers. Brian G up in uh up at 1265 Lombardi we are looking at you sir yeah he'd be good him. for the Packers yeah yeah um go to Derek Hall one of my favorite I mean kind of I'm pretty biased against it but I think Derek Hall's gonna be really good um he's a strong run defender and um he's in enti- he has an enticing blend of burst power and arm length um those are my two I only have Two pros and two cons this week. I don't have a lot. Um, so those are my two pros for him. My cons are, though, is he has tight hips. So he's kind of, you know, he's not he's not as flexible. He's not going to – I don't know, man. It's just he's – sometimes the way he plays is very, is very tight with just – it's so hard to explain. You'd have to watch to really – to really understand what I'm talking about. But – um. And then his his coaching instability at Auburn. I mean, he's went through so many different defensive coordinators. Uh, Brian Harson, um, the Gus before Brian Harson. So I mean, it's like he he's dealt with so much crap with instability there. And I think he's an undeveloped pass rusher too. Um, he hasn't really had that much playing time, but he's he's slowly increased over time at Auburn playing. Um, but that's he all I've got. He has had a 10-sack for... season in the SEC. Yeah, which is not really, you know, it, it's it's a pain to, to get that done. I mean, this is the SEC, so we know how that works. It's the best league. Yeah. It's the best division in college football. It's just, you know, it's just it. Hands um, down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, Nolan Smith, you want to talk about old dude Brian G from Lombardi Street? This is this is your guy. You should go get. Lombardi Street. No, whatever. Lombardi. I don't care. I don't care. I don't know what you said. What did you say? Lombardi Way? What was it? 1265 Lombardi Avenue. Lombardi. Okay, Lombardi Avenue. Whatever. Um, 
this is who you want. This is who I've seen you guys mock a couple times. Um, I like I like that fit. Yeah, I like that fit, Nolan Smith. Um, we'll talk about him when we get to the combine stuff because I've it, he was one of the big standout guys. But um, yeah, his size and speed is incredible. He's a two-way defender, and he's he's he by far he's probably the most physical edge in this class. And that's against Will Anderson also. But I, I still think Nolan Smith has a little bit of the edge over Will. Um, he, he's kind of an undeveloped pass rusher. but And his hand-to-hand combat skills need some improvement. But those are all things that wherever he's drafted, your D-line coach will be able to fix those up in no time. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> you know, got anything about Nolan or no? I think he needs to work on his weight a little. Kind of like whenever Brian Burns came out. But that's about it. Okay. Yeah. As the resident guy that really doesn't watch a whole lot of college ball, uh, I'll be honest, man. What I saw from all five of these guys here uh, at at the dra- uh, at the draft at the combine, combine. Yep. was, uh, dude, these guys are immaculate. I can tell you one thing for sure: uh, this year, especially, is a special draft class year because it's a very deep edge class, it's a very deep tight end class, very deep receiver class and a very deep quarterback class. And you don't really get that a whole lot. So this is going to be a very special draft class. I'm very excited to see who goes where and what it's going to look like in like five years for the league because these young dudes are going to light it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Tyree Wilson's number two. I think that there's an argument that Nolan Smith could be two there also. But uh, with Tyree, man, his size, he's physically dominant, and he's very, he's extremely versatile. Uh, dude, dude's a dog. That's just in the discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, his athleticism is a little on the shaky side, and uh, he 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 has a natural. He has a he has a problem with playing with high pad level. Um, stuff that can be fixed with that high pad level versus them like pulling guards and stuff is gonna kill him. It'll get him killed. They'll they'll run him over every time. So if he can learn to stay lower. And drop that, you know, drop his tail. He'll be fine. But yeah, this just the high pad level is my biggest concern with him. And then Will Anderson. I don't. I mean, I don't really know how to explain it other than dog. Like we know, oh, yeah. we, we've known Will Anderson was going to be the number one pick. Well, we we know Will Anderson could have possibly been the. Was going to be the pick. top edge. Was going to be the top edge. Yeah, for the last two seasons. Um, and he probably still will be the top edge, if not the top just defensive player taken overall. Um, he's a high-level athlete. His sack production is insane. I think the I, I may be wrong. Y'all might you might want to look this up, but uh, mm-hmm. I think he's had two double-digit sack seasons in the SEC. Yeah, he has. yeah. His freshman um, year he had seven. His sophomore year he had seventeen and a half, which is this, I believe. Geez. The same amount that Tyree Wilson had, a little bit. That is like one sack less than Tyree Wilson had had his entire career. And then last season he had ten. And also in 17. 2021 he had 31 tackles for loss. He went from seven to 17 seven. and a half. And as 31 a, tackles for loss as a junior or as a sophomore. As a sophomore, that's 17 insane. and a half. Like we think that if you get you know eight, nine, ten in the SEC. It's 17 and a half. That the that tackle for loss number is insane. Yeah, 31 tackles for losses. Absolutely incredible. Um, and he's a dominant run defender. Dumb. Um I think he's a little bit though. Um I think he's develop it is developmental. He's gonna be a nuanced developmental pass rusher. Um so he, he's going to need a little bit of help when it comes to the NFL and getting into how that works with them. But I, I don't have any issue with Will Anderson coming in and just taking a league by storm and just coming in and dominating. Um, yeah. And I, I, I do think, though, that he's going to be a position-specific player. Like, he's he's going to have to be an edge. You're not going to be able to make him a – I don't think you're going to be able to make him a like a 3-4 linebacker rushing. I think you're going to have to make – he's going to have to be the edge. I don't I think, think you can, you know, don't, I don't want, I don't want to see him as a linebacker. I yeah. think yeah. Nolan Smith and Will Anderson both need to go to a three, four. Yeah. And I think Tyree, Derek and Lucas could play in either. Probably. I agree. Or that, yeah. But I just, yeah, I just think that Will and, and, and as you said, Noah, Nolan 
are definitely going to be your two people that probably need to stay in three, four inches because they're going to dominate. Like one on one with these tackles. Yeah, uh, they'll murder them. They should. Yeah. Like I, I'd look like the uh, Will Anderson versus like a Tristan Wirfs is going to be interesting, or even a Trent Williams, which would be yeah. interesting. Mm. That's why I think if you're the Cardinals. That's who you should you look get. at is yeah, going to be Will get Anderson him. because you got to play Trent Williams twice a season. Give him somebody who can give him some hail, mm-hmm. and, and Will Anderson's going to do it. So I'm excited for Will Anderson, man. I've been excited for Will Anderson for a while, and that's coming from an Auburn fan. I can't stand Alabama, but that's it. I, hey, hey, man, I, you, can't, you can't deny talent. That, dude, that's what I'm saying, man. You can't. You can't hate it. You these boys can. The boys from Bama can play. That's just how it is. That's why it's so special when anybody in the SEC does beat them. That's why we're you guys just talking too much. We just beat Alabama, who normally produces nine first round draft picks every season. Yeah, that's a that's a good accomplishment. Mm. But, There's also a back to back Bronco Nagurski. Trophy winner. I can never yeah, say that. The defensive line. line. That's that. the defensive yeah. line thing, right? Yeah, now. he's a top defensive line player in the country back to back years. Mm. He also got the Lombardi Award. Man. Mm. Uh, let's jump and knock out the combine stuff real quick. Um, we're going to talk about some, some standouts in the combine um, from the last couple days <clears throat> from what happened. Um, I think the only person in here I didn't get was, well, if I didn't get him, I'll bring him up. Um, how do you say this name? Do you remember? Is it like Kalijah uh, Cancy? Kalijah Cancy. Kalijah, yeah, okay, Kalijah. I was gonna butcher that. Thank you. Um, he's don't I get he's from Pitt, and I know he come out and run a four six seven, and he he, he had a great combine. <clears throat> I don't need to see the Aaron Donald comparisons. Don't do that. Stop! Stop doing. It. You don't. You you can't put that on somebody being a, a rookie coming out. I don't know, man, because I saw his. I saw like his draft stuff compared with Aaron Donald, and they're very similar. Like very similar. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, they had a great draft, but that's a heck of a. That's like some quarterback coming out looking really good and being like, "Ooh, Tom Brady." Yeah, you know what I'm well, saying. That's that's yeah. or like a linebacker. Ooh, Lawrence Taylor. You know that's a heck of a comparison to give some because then it's like, well, if you don't live up to that, then you're a buzz. Not 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 necessarily, yeah. but you know I, it it depends, man. I, but yeah, Kal- uh, Kalaja see had a crazy uh, track, and his forty is insane. I don't know what these defensive players are drinking this year. But these dudes are running; they're blowing these forties out the water. Mm-hmm. And there was one guy that they slowed the tape down on. I don't know who it was, but he ran like a four three nine Jeez. in slow motion. I, but it it booked him for like a four, like a four 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 or something. I don't know how the I don't know what was going on with the clock. But they had a couple people's that. You know, oh, that was a corner, I think. Um, I, yeah, but it was like, I'm pretty sure. Because that comes whenever was. you slowed it down, it was a fourth. But you also got to remember that TV clock is not what they actually use. Yeah. No, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah. They. But uh, who else we got? Oh. Um. Talk about you know I I don't want to yeah, say I'm biased, but Owen had a great freaking combine. Mm-hmm. Um. Owen was Owen was one of the fastest linebackers in the in the combine. A four three nine for a linebacker is scary. He ran the same combine sec uh, forty. As Nolan Smith did. So, wow. and Nolan's an edge. This guy's a linebacker. Um, he had a 10 6 broad jump, and I mean, his 10 yard his ten yard dash was, you know, 1.5. So, I mean, Owen's a dog. He, he's going to be good. He, he won't go in the first, I, and I think he's going to be a day two pick, but I'm looking more towards like a third, like a third I round pick that. somewhere. Definitely. Um, you don't so get, you don't I, run a four three nine mm-hmm. and fall to day four. Day no, three. absolutely not. I mean, absolutely no. not. Um, so I'm. Um, that's someone that I, I hope Carolina has their eyes on because I do like Owen and we do need some linebacker help and depth. 
So I'm not, I wouldn't be against it, and I think so does Green Bay, if I'm not mistaken. Just Looking a little bit. Linebacker stuff. So, um, speaking of Nolan Smith, uh, 43 9 40, 1.5, 10 yard. He, he had a, a 41 and a half vertical. Insane. And a 10 8 broad jump. You it's talk like about a, somebody that just guy. made their self a lot of money. It's this guy right here. This guy made himself a lot of money, and that's just with these scores. He hasn't went to the Georgia Pro Day yet, which Pro Days start next week. So, hoorah. <laughs> um, Will Anderson. Will Anderson ran a 4-6 four, a four, flat. Uh, I mean, he's. I, I don't know what these guys are just – I don't know what's it. I feel like every year the new people that's coming in, the rookies coming in, just keep getting better and better. And and I'm like, how much better can these guys get? Are they going to get to it where everybody's just going to be like insane? Yeah, they are. Eventually, it's you're going to see a lineman running a 4 2. I don't get it, man. I'm it's just a combination like, of. Athletes getting better, but also the training for the combine getting way. That's what it's got to be. It's got to be the training for the combine because it's it's ridiculous. Um, and then Mr. Anthony Richardson, dude, balled out. Yeah, fourth fastest forty by a quarterback in the combine since two thousand and three. He ran a four four three. Um, for people that watched when the QBs went, they do the little thing where they show older QBs running with this guy, and this guy left Cam Newton in the dust. He ran a four four three. Cam Newton ran a four six. And he so could have ran faster. And he could have ran faster. He only ran it once. I think it'd have been cool to see him run it twice, but he ran it once. Um, he now holds the combine record for a QB uh, for a vertical. He uh, a forty. Uh, 40 and a half. So that's insane for a vertical. And then his broad jump, he also now owns the combine record at 10 9. Whoever gets this dude is, is getting a steal. If you can develop him, that's where it's going to be the issue. Is you, have to, you have to be able to develop. If you can develop this dude, yeah, no issue with it. And that's yeah, where I see. Seattle. Well, you've got Seattle, but I think that's also where you watch for the Colts because why can't Shane Steichen turn this guy into what he did with Jalen Hurts? That's fair. If Shane Steichen can develop this guy like he developed Hurts, oh boy. Yeah. Seriously. That's scary. That's scary. That's yeah, that's that's creepy, man. That's that's I don't want what else we got. Oh, let's do some NFL news, man. Don't forget about my boy Zach Oh, oh yeah, guy. Zach is. I think it's Coons. Don't care. But it, okay. We can't just keep saying it like yeah, that, man. Dude, he was on PMS, and they asked him, and he said Coons. Don't disrespect cool. him. Man. You, if you want great him, name. you can't be disrespecting him. It's not disrespectful. It's a great name. It's no. He said he didn't like when people called him that. Sucks to suck. What? Let's You're move mean. on. You don't like YG because the YG him sucks. Stop. You stop it right now! Get a hold of yourself! <laughs> Ladies oh, and gentlemen, man. welcome to Around the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, since we're laughing, we'll keep laughing. The Giants <laughs> gave Daniel <laughs> Bolt. <laughs> that never happened for YGM. <laughs> the, um, since we're I sitting here laughing, I, I give you. I'm, since we're yeah, since we're sitting here laughing, I'll give y'all something else to laugh about. The New York Giants gave Daniel Jones a four-year, hundred sixty million dollar contract, and then they franchise tag Saquon. This one I expected. That is insane. I'm sorry. If you're a Giants fan, if you like this, fine. Okay, I'm not gonna hate you for not for liking Daniel Jones. I'm not gonna discourage you from that. You. Show me where in the last four years where Daniel Jones is worth $160 million, and I'll be okay with it. I, mean, I don't care personally, but, you know. You know what this really, like, makes me think about? And and I was, I've was i been thinking about this all week. Um, I'm actually really glad that you have it in the slide. 
This only made the trade or the market value for one Lamar Jackson skyrocket because Daniel Jones, I said it last week on the podcast, he doesn't deserve the money. I don't know why New York gave it to him. He doesn't deserve it. He had one good season. The rest of his, the rest of the time that he's been a starting quarterback in New York, all I've ever heard come out of New York City for for Daniel Jones is when are we going to get his replacement? When are we drafting his replacement? Even Giants fans that I know are like, yeah, he's not the best. And now after getting a couple of MVP chants and him like barely squeaking into the playoffs. $130 million? Million. No. Not not even not even no. Hell no. Like All right. so absolutely not. Th- this is where they're like he had a good season. He beat the Vikings in the playoffs. Okay. Okay. I'll give you that. Because the Vikings were hot and they beat him. I'm not gonna hate. Now the next game when they went and played the Eagles in the playoffs, they lost. 38 to 7. Let's let's listen to your 160 million dollar quarterback. Let's let's look at this. 15 for 27, 135 yards and an interception. That's worth 160 million dollars, Giants fans. What I'm this is what I'm saying. Does he need weapons? Absolutely. I'll give you that. Go go get you some wide receivers, go get him some help. If he starts looking better with that, good for him. If not, Brian Dayball just signed his own fire and his own, you know, his thing. Because you're put now, you're putting all your money on this guy, and the, you know he's saying he's got his guy. He wants to roll with DJ. Fine. I'm, I'm, you know, I think now if they're gonna do it where they have voidable years, so they can in two years if he looks like crap after getting him weapons, they can get out and get somebody else. Okay. I don't know how that would work, but I was gonna say, from what I understand, it is a four-year deal. He is, yeah, he yeah. is there. Yeah, it's locked in. It wasn't fully guaranteed, right? Didn't he get like eighty-two million fully guaranteed? Oh, it's no. like it's, it's eighty like, or ninety yeah, guaranteed for the first two years, and then he gets an extra ten if he makes it to year three. Yeah. So no, I, I read like that over half. Yeah, I read that it's one hundred sixty million, but with all the incentives including, it's up to one hundred ninety-five. Yeah, which I'll yeah. never hit. Yeah. No, nah, probably not. But if he does, hey, you know what? Maybe, nah. maybe, maybe Dayball can pull something out of this dude. I ain't saying he can't, but good luck. That's all I'm saying. Uh, what else we got? Ah, uh, the Seahawks made an interesting move uh, with bringing back. I don't want to say interesting. A good move with bringing it's, back. It's Gino the right Smith. move. Good yeah, for Gino, uh, man. What was it? What was it? Three it year, hundred and five. Yeah, yeah. hundred fifty. Hundred fifty. Think it's something like that. There's a, something with a five a, and a zero. There's a there's a one five zero somewhere mixed in there. Okay, well know that. Um, <clears throat> they said they're not against signing a QB in the draft. I doubt it. I do um, think that it's more like a two year deal than a three. Like it's structured I thought, that. Way. I thought it was three. no. It, Maybe, no, it's okay. three years, but it's structured oh. where if they want to get rid of him, it's like the it's like the uh, Teddy Bridgewater contract. He got a three year. It was only supposed to be like two. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, good for Gino, man, because I heard – I read something that said Gino's only made like $19 million his entire NFL career, and then he just signed a $150 million contract. Hey, good for Gino. All I'm saying is when they write you off, don't write back, and you get $150 million, baby. So go for it. Go, go three, Gino. Three-year three, three oh. deal worth up to $105 million, not 150, 105. Okay, 105 okay. Which, by the way, Giants – that is what you pay a quarterback that still has to prove something. That 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 yeah. wouldn't have been a bad deal for DJ's 105, but I think that he Not wanted. All. I think he wanted 45 a year, which he got 40 a year. But I'd have been like, look, you really haven't done all that great, and it's my first year as a head coach. I'm gonna give you a two year 105 million or three year 105 million. Let's say whatever. And if you show me in two years that we're still getting in the playoffs and being Super Bowl contenders, we will rework that deal and give you a bigger extension with more money. But you got to prove to me something. Well, 
but that's the thing. Like, if I'm the Giants, right, and I'm unsure about my future with, with uh, Daniel Jones, why not wait and see what the Seahawks are – if the Seahawks are going to offer Geno, why not, you know, wait and see what they're going to offer him? Because Geno and Daniel Jones had a very similar season last year. They both had great seasons. So, like, if if that's his – if that's his comparison, right? Like if that's who we're saying, okay, he was one of the top NFC quarterbacks and so is Gino. Let's see what they're going to pay that guy so we can base it off and we don't end up getting screwed. But New York went ahead and, and, and bit the bullet. And for what? I mean, did they for, sign for, him before that? I think, no. No, no, they no hold Gino on. First. They saw, yeah, because they signed Daniel Jones like five minutes before four o'clock the other day. Yeah. Yeah. And then they tag Saquon. <clears throat> yeah. Well, the Giants bit themselves in the butt because they didn't pick up his fifth year option. So that's that's them. another thing. Is this like you thing, didn't yeah. you didn't trust him enough at the beginning of the year to pick up that fifth, and now you gave him that. So it's like I, I don't know, man. Could have had him for only like twenty butt. million, and now you're yep. paying him one hundred and five. Yep. Next or, up, I'm sorry, uh, oh, yeah. So these next two. Um, me and Cody talked about in one of the first episodes we ever did when we talked about where we thought people would be going. Um, the the Cowboys have franchise tagged Tony Pollard, and the Raiders have franchise tagged Josh Jacobs. Not really much to talk about here. We've seen it coming. We kind of expected this. Yeah, they're both they're both getting around like ten five. I think is what the tag was for running backs ten one ten five somewhere in between there. It's something um, like that. It's something with 10. Yeah, so they're getting 10 something. Um, I think they both play on the tag, and then depending on how they play through the season, they'll get a deal worked out. Um, just don't over. I mean, I don't care. I'm not a fan of these teams, but now I know not to overpay a running back because that gets you nothing. So, um, and as a Dallas fan, you should know not to overpay a running back because you've done it once. Um, and the one so, guy you did it to is probably about to get. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking exactly. of which, this really only affects Ezekiel Elliott because either he's going to have to leave or he's going to have to start splitting snaps with Pollard. And the more I see a Pollard, the more I think he's the better running back in Dallas anyways. I mean, he, so, is. he definitely is. He is. Yeah. And then, ah, we'll finish up with this. Actually, I think I have. Yeah, okay, I've got two more. Um, the Saints have traded for Derek Carr. As of right now, where it's sitting, the Saints are favored to win the NFC South, and the Saints now have the best QB in the NFC South, which is fine. Because now you're for facing now. for now, right? Because right now you're going. It's Derek Carr, Matt Corral, Desmond Ritter, and Kyle Trask. Kyle Trask. Yes, you do have the great. You do have the best quarterback. That's fine. Um. I had no issue. I had no issue with Derek Carr. I didn't mind Derek Carr. I didn't want him on my team. I didn't mind Derek Carr. Now can't stand him. Hope he gets just becomes old Pick City two at least two games a year. Just throw about six to eight interceptions in those games, and I'm cool. But um, I, and apparently from what I heard, the Saints are looking to rework and give Michael Thomas an extension. I don't know where all this money's coming from, because well, but the the cap ain't like real, dog. Years. It's like two years. This it's cap ain't real because these guys are so under the cap; it's not even funny. But I, I, I don't yeah. I don't understand. I and this is what's weird, yeah. huh? Huh? So cap's real. It's well, just I, I mean, you, I know it's real. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, it's like, like an expression. Yeah, it's an expression, dude. You, uh, you an expression. Well, no, I'm just saying that for some of the Twitter people that are like, oh, the cap's not real. If you realize anything about the not Michael yet. Thomas deal, the extension isn't going to happen until after, like it's going to start in 2025, where they have no one signed anyways. And so everybody goes, right. oh, the cap isn't real to the Michael Thomas thing. What are you talking about? They're, they don't have anyone signed then. Yeah. So, of course, they can sign him. They have $308, mil, uh, $308 million to work with. Yeah, that's how it works. And you have money. Yeah, yeah, they Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering if they're go, who they're going to like release this upcoming year and the year after for messing with that, or who they're going to like rework deals with and stuff. You would think it would be like Kamara, 
Probably like that's, I would that's, assume Kamara's gone. Kamara's going to be interesting also because of what's going on here with his legal stuff. Maybe maybe Lattimore, maybe uh, Cameron Jordan. Like, you got to assume. I've seen Cameron. I, I would love for Cameron Jordan to get out of this. I hate Cameron Jordan is the <laughs> – that's know. the – I hate – I can't say hate, man. That's such a strong word. I strongly dislike Cameron Jordan. I believe despise would work. There. Like uh, it's despicable. He's despicable. Um, let's end the NFL news, man. Uh, the Ravens have put the non-exclusive franchise tag on Lamar, and there's two things about this. One, with the non-exclusive, that means that any team is allowed to call Lamar, or Lamar can call them. And they can work on something to bring him into whatever team he goes to. That also means that a lot of people saying, well, it starts with two first round picks. Not exactly. There's actually some sort of loophole that you can actually get out of being just two first. You can send other stuff. Um, I don't know. It's got to be first round equivalent. I think so, yeah. Uh, but where did you do that? They were talking about it on the PMS show with one of these agents that came in. One of the a former GM come in and was, oh, was talking like, about it. I was like the Dan, but I know you're talking Mike about Mike something. I think. Yeah, I know was. what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're they had. And he was like, it doesn't have to be the two first. It could be a first, and then just you know other stuff. Whatever. Yeah. My next mm-hmm. thing. This is where. Okay, so I think the Ravens doing this isn't a. Screw it. Buy Lamar. Whatever. We don't care. I think it's a, we've offered you something and you said no. So when you come to us and say, hey, look, Atlanta offered me $230 million and I want it. Cool. We're going to match it. Yeah. Now yeah, what? They're gonna you going to match whatever you, it is. Gonna, yeah, that's exa- that's all they're doing. They're saying, go out there, put put throw your, throw your pole in the water, you get a cast in, and wait, get some little nibbles, and then when somebody bites on it, we're going to bite too. And we're going to see who you pick. Do you want to stay in Baltimore? Or is this your way of literally just being like, I want out? That's all this is. It's, it's not that the Ravens want to lose Lamar because they don't. But it's one of those where it's like, well, they offered him like, what, 160 guaranteed or something? 200. Was it 200? Okay, 200 guaranteed. At one, they got leaked. Who knows if it's true? That's another thing. Is some people have been telling me that he's not wanting a fully guaranteed contract. I don't think that's right. I think he wants fully guaranteed. Yeah, why would you not? Well, this all stems from Deshaun Watson, and we can thank the Cleveland Browns for resetting the market. Um, thank you, Browns. Yeah, um, you're always screwing something up. Um, but it's like, and a lot of people's like, well, maybe it's the NFL PA's way and the the owner's way of colluding against Lamar. I mean, do you blame him? It is, but can you blame him? Because if, if he gets a fully guarantee, everybody's going to start wanting fully guarantees. Yeah, And that hurts. It does. I mean, it some does. can't even afford it. So. That's what I'm saying. Some people are not going to be able to break that bank. We don't, not everybody owns Home Depot and Walmart and, and is David Tepper rich. They're just not. It's going to so, be hilarious when Burns does it. Dude, I don't know. I've talked to one or two Cincinnati, people. Baby. A lot of people are saying that, like, Joe Burrow is liable to take a pay, like, not take a big, massive contract so he can keep a team around him. Ooh. Hey, respect to him if he does, because that's what Breeze and Brady did, and you see what he got them. Rings. Ring, uh, and then rings. So Save Mike Brown. I can't. Yeah, so I'm just saying, like, it's it's not an awful thing if he does it. It's smart on his part. I get if, you know, go get your bread. Go get it. Stack it up. Stack your money. But, I mean, these guys want to win championships, too. So if you want to, why would you not take a little bit of a pay cut to bring in a better, you know, a, a better edge or be able to bring in a better wide receiver to throw to or a tight end? You know what I'm saying? Just bring in another weapon. So yep. I – I don't know. It'll be interesting. The the Justin Herbert Joe Burrow contract should be up what next year? They'll be yeah, bringing in extensions so. next yeah, season. They'll be probably signing extension. I think Burrow might sign one this offseason, but it won't kick in yet. Mm, that's gonna be crazy, man. But um, it, it it'll be interesting to see what this what happens here with Lamar. Um, we now know 
uh, one of the reasons why when this news broke and all eight or nine teams that are QB needy come out and was like, nah, we're good. Um, I think that because, well, we know now one of one of the teams that come out said no, we know why they said no. Mm-hmm. Um, the other ones, I, I, Atlanta honestly surprised me when they were the first. They were like, no, nah, we're good. Yeah. And they put out like their own, like on their own oh, website. Like, yeah, five on their own. Minutes later. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they had that cook. They had that wrote, written up. See, that's it where I like, have the issue. Like, you're not even gonna try and talk to him, like at that, all. Oh, that, that's another thing. Okay, maybe, <clears throat> this is maybe where they know this, something that we don't. I mean, you know, well, this, like this, this is this is where Lamar Jackson is screwing himself. His mother is his agent. Yeah, pretty much. I don't, you know, I get it. I'm not going to say they're not smart. They don't know what they're doing. They do, 100%. You, you, you have to know what you're doing. Yeah. But she doesn't, with well, these agents, you got to understand, these agents aren't just agents to one player. Lamar's, whoever Lamar's agent could be, could also be the agent of a guy on the Texans, the Bears, the Packers, the, the this guy, the that guy, and have all these different players from every other 31 teams. So that means that the agent already has some sort of, you know, relationship with the owners and with the with the general managers and stuff to be able to make the phone call and go, hey, you want to talk about Lamar? And be able to have that, you know, pers- to be able to persuade these guys into, you know, you know, take a look at eight, talk about Lamar. You want to, you know what I'm saying? His mother, it's kind of awkward that now instead of the teams being like, hey, man, look, to the agent, be like, look, we, we just don't, we, we're not really interested in Lamar. Now his mother is going to call you and they're going to go, we have no interest in your son. and mm-hmm. Or Lamar is going to call and they're going to go, we have no interest in you. And it's gonna, it's gonna, it's not going to be right. So it's like, I think this is why I'm not against athletes, you know, being their own agent or even, you know, having a family member as an agent. But that's where it gets tricky because you don't have the relationships that are already built with these owners and GMs. You don't have any of that. You have to do it yourself now. So that's where it kind of is going to bite him in the butt. And that's why I think he's going to stay in Baltimore. Yeah. So, I can see that. Yeah. I, I think I, I definitely think somebody <clears throat> he's going to go back to Ravens. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't think um, see him in another uniform. No, that would be strange. I mean, it would be strange, but it's not the strangest we've seen. We've seen Peyton Manning in Denver. We've seen Tom Brady in uh, Tampa. We've seen. Yeah, Brady in Tampa is just weird. That one was. You know, we've seen Randy Moss with the Raiders and the Patriots. I mean, we it, we've seen Jerry Rice with the Raiders. I mean, dude, we we've seen some weird things, man. I mean, Jerry Rice was a Seahawk. A lot of Jerry people Rice don't remember that. Was a Seahawk. God Almighty, he was a Seahawk. A lot of people don't remember that. That was Steve weird. Smith was a Raven. It's weird, dude. I, it's just stuff you don't see, man. Yeah. Um. Oh, I'm glad this. I'm. I just thought about this. the The last time a NFL player was put on a non exclusive and traded was actually 03. And it was a guy that played for the Packers that got traded to the Panthers. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you remember who it was? I, it was somebody say, to the Panthers. I thought it was a Bears player. Maybe it was. I don't know. I don't know. But I know the Panthers is who traded for him. Um, I seen it on Twitter or Instagram. I seen. I should have seen it in the chat. I don't even know why I did. But, yeah, I was gonna say that would have been interesting. Uh, if you guys actually but, know who that was, because. Reason, if I like, see it again, right I'll I'll look it up. And look yeah. Up and if you guys know who that is, though, uh, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, be a fun little fact of the week. Uh, Cody, let's talk about some Packers, baby. All righty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to. The segment where we talk all things Packers on Pack the Bank. It's Packers Corner, baby. Uh, we're going to keep it kind of short and simple here uh, this week. Obviously, if you have been in any sphere of 
NFL news, you have heard about the exchanges between Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets. Uh, last week, I actually broke that Aaron was in New York. Um, proud of myself for that, catching that tweet while we were actually on uh, on the air filming the show last week. But um, yeah, so we did break that uh, that Aaron was in New York, and obviously it was not for no reason. It was not to talk to any of the Packers representatives. It was to talk to the Jets. Um, Aaron got permission from New York, and, or sorry, from Green Bay, and uh, he talked to the Jets, and apparently that went well enough for them to want to fly out to uh, California to see Mr. Rogers, and they had another great meeting. And it seems that all is well. Unfortunately, here is a picture of what Mr. Rogers would look like in a Jets uniform. Kind of weird to look at, but obviously not out of the realm of possibilities as we are currently just waiting for Rogers to decide what um, what he's going to do in 2023. Uh, MJ Hurley... Earlier this week on Twitter posted that uh, the sources, his sources tell him that the Packers and Jets actually expect to get a deal done in the coming days that would send Aaron Rodgers to New York for the 2023 NFL season. The only holdup centers around draft picks, compensation, and the amount of money Green Bay is willing to eat in 2023. Me personally, I think that we actually will – end up eating a substantial amount of that uh, just so we could probably entice them to give us a a better uh, draft capital, if you will. Hopefully that number 13 overall pick, which of course is very valuable. And I have actually seen a lot of people mocking us to get, and maybe that will happen. Next up, we've got uh, Sauce Gardner, who went on his YouTube channel yesterday. You can watch the video. Um, I'll probably post it like here or something, but, uh, he burned a cheese head, man. He said that, uh, if, if Rogers comes to the, to the jets, um, first of all, it's going to be package deals all over. Uh, he said, he can't tell you who, but just know there will be some, uh, some players hopefully coming to, uh, the green and gold, um, the better green, in my opinion, <sighs> sauce Gardner, um, also is with Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall, and he uh, he burned a cheese head, man. It was it was pretty uh, upsetting to see after him uh, parading around with it when the Jets beat the Packers earlier this season. But it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I think that's all that we uh, pretty much have for Packers Corner this week. Oh, one more thing. We were able to successfully um, restructure a contract. I believe it was today. I actually posted it on my uh, my Instagram page. Yes. Uh, David Bakhtiari, Agent 69, has been restructured. The Ah. Packers have restructured uh, David Bakhtiari, converting $9.5 million into a March roster bonus. And five point five million of his base salary into a guaranteed signing bonus. So David Bakhtiari will be a Green Bay Packer for the foreseeable future. We are very excited to have him back. I don't have, ah, sorry, I don't have a graphic for it. Um, but yeah, we're very excited to have uh, David Bakhtiari back in the building. Um, obviously, one of the premier left left tackles in football, and he's always going to be great for us. Um, coming off an ACL tear last year. Uh, after not playing for honestly two years and not giving up uh, any sacks is all that you could really ask from your starting left tackle. But anyways, folks, that is it for today in Packers Corner. Short and sweet. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, leave us a like and a comment. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button with the bell. As always, we'll see you later.
All right, so before we get into the fun stuff to talk about, man, let's talk real quick. Uh, we have, before I talk about Taylor, we have released Damian Wilson. So we saved $3.6 million, so we were sitting at $1.1 million. And then we restructured Mr. Taylor Moten, and we saved around $11.1 million, so we're sitting at $11.15 million in cap space. And then we restructured Xavier Woods, so now we're sitting at around $13.1 million. So, so we we restructured these two guys. Yeah. Good. We needed the we needed the cap. And um, before you go, I don't know if you're going to go to the big thing next, but you want to talk about Burns? Oh yeah. The yep. so it has been brought up that Burns, the contract extension is on the way. It's just not going to be like today. Soon. Give it, yep. you know, it's it's, yeah, it's not going to be soon. I, I think they're going <clears> of <throat> the summer probably. Or yeah, I think they're summer. going to. I think they're going to, yeah, get into all that. But I think they want to work out their free agent deals first, and then, um, yeah, and then they'll. And it might be the might be a bad idea to be honest. Not resigning, yeah, him, resigning him at that time because if yeah. Nick Bosa gets that extension, the number – I'm not saying Brian Burns better than Nick Bosa because he's not, but if that number goes up to what? Could it be maybe 30? You're going to have to pay Brian. It just went from being 20 mil to being 26, 27. And so you've got done early, you may have gotten them cheaper. Yeah, kind of like no, that DJ Moore contract last year, you know, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then – now, leading into that, everybody today, it is, today is, what's today? Today is Friday, March 10th of 2023. And everybody on Twitter, Panthers Twitter, if you're on it, is, well, what are we going to do about the restructure of DJ Moore? Well, it's simple. We're just going to trade him. Yeah. Uh huh. The Carolina Panthers now Hold the key to the front door to Castle, baby. King in the castle. We're sitting at number one. We have traded with the Chicago Bears. The Carolina Panthers have acquired pick number one in the 2023 draft. And the Chicago Bears have acquired a 2023 number one pick, the number nine pick from the Carolina Panthers. The pick number 61, which is a... a two, one of the Christian McCaffrey, the second Christian McCaffrey trade. The second round pick for CMC we got. Our next year's 2024 first. A 2025 second round pick and wide receiver DJ Moore. So win, a win. lot of uh, you know, yeah, win win. If you're a Bears fan and you think you fleeced us, fine. Whatever. You didn't, but that's okay. Um, because at the end of the day, as a Panther fan, I would much rather need a Q, a, a wide receiver than a QB one every single day of the week. Yep. I mean, you know, great QBs can make mid wide receivers look good. We've seen it done in Carolina before. Let's be Too honest. Much. Too, yeah, too many times. Um, if you're mad about this trade, you don't know ball, champ. You don't know ball. Yeah. It's All the people that are mad about this trade are the same people that have been complaining that the Panthers don't have somebody to throw the ball. Yep. You know. And, and there's something else we'll talk about since we've got the number one overall pick that we'll bring up here in a minute. Yep. But you've got to be excited for this, man. I, I don't see how you can't be. I mean, it's this is huge. We were waiting for it. Um, and I'm, I'm sure people's like, well, how do you just pull this trade up and just pull it out and just send it? Uh-uh. It's, it's already been come out. This trade was made in Indianapolis. It just had to be – they had to work some kinks out, and it was done. That's why 
And <clears throat> the way that I've seen it, and I don't know if I've got the slide for it or not, but um, I don't think I do. No, I don't. DJ Moore was pretty much the – DJ. One, one of the two things. DJ Moore was the reason we didn't send a 2025 first. This would have been for three first-round draft picks if we would have kept DJ Moore. Um, and but two, the Bears – like to basic demand. That's what I, that's what I was going to get to. Yeah, that was my second thing. They pretty much was like, "No, nah, it's going to be DJ Moore. We need we need somebody for Justin Fields to throw the ball to." I don't blame. Him. I mean, after you went and traded Fair. for Chase Claypool, and he said he was a top three wide receiver, and then barely put up a little over five hundred yards. Absolutely, you uh, you're like, "Yeah, now nah, I'm going to need DJ." That's fine. It it sucks. I, I'm a DJ fan. I got the jersey. I, you know, I love DJ Moore. He's he's a great ball player, good wide receiver. Um, I hope he ball. I hope he balls out for Shy Town. I hope him and Justin Fields have a good connection. But nobody hopes that. Yeah, you don't hope that. Um, but he gonna get locked up in Soldier Field whenever the Panthers play him. Hey, that's another thing. Yep. Carolina yep. comes to Chicago this season. And J.C. Horn versus D.J. Moore is going to be electric. I love D.J. Moore, but that day, buddy, it's seatbelt. Click it or tick it, baby. That's all I'm saying. Lock the, it up. The Jair Alexander seatbelt? Don't do that. That's J.C. Horn. No, sir. That is Jair. That's, that is. J.C. Horn been doing that since South Carolina. Don't do that. Boom. You know who he got it from? How long has Jair been doing it? Since he was a rookie in the league, bro. Uh, loser. All right. Well, if Jair gives up more yards than J.C. Horn this year to D.J. Moore, I don't want to hear it. He won't. First of all, that's not even fair because we play him twice. I just mean in any one of those games. Oh. In either one of those games. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hey, hey, hey. Pat Sertan was supposed to lock him down, too, when he put 120 on his noggin, so we won't talk about that, though. Jair's better than Pat Sertan, right? He is. Okay. He is. Okay. What's your, uh, there you <clears throat> Okay, so we traded for the first overall pick. Now guess what? You want to talk about playing chess, not checkers? The Panthers are open to trading back. Now, the only way, and this, this is to recoup some of your picks, there's only one team you're trading back with, and that's the people right under you. I'd call Houston, and I'd go, hey, you guys want to come to one? Because then the only way you're going to trade back is if you like young. You're going to have to like two of the QBs. You're going to have to love both of them and be like, either one I'm cool yeah. with. Yeah. That's the only way. Um, so if you do that, if I'm Carolina, I would ask for – of course, a pick swap, and then I don't know if I'm if I'd ask for a next year first, or if I would ask for the number twelve pick also. I don't think. And I then maybe 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 a next year second or third. It'd be Just, like you know. I think it'd be two, and a probably a day two pick this year, day two pick next year. Like one you're first moving up one then, spot. You're not giving up twelve to do that. Well, you know, it depends on how bad you want it. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if they're like, we'll give you 12, I'll be like, hey, hey, yeah, I, ain't they, go, they I, ain't, up 12. I ain't gonna say no. I ain't gonna they, say they, no. They offer up 12 and 2. You take that with never like You're like, back. absolutely. You can have Bryce Young. I'll take CJ. Which, since I said that, sources going around is, is the NFL feels like we traded up for one because of CJ Stroud. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna actually ask you guys. This is what I was talking to you about before the show. But this is kind of like my, uh, my devil's advocate thing. What, like, which one do you guys want? Like, I know that you guys are both pretty high on, uh, on CJ Stroud. But like, if Bryce Young is there, and for whatever reason you guys don't end up trading back to one, you could have any quarterback in the entire NFL draft or any player. Like, who are you taking? Who do I want? Okay. You know what? I'll let CK go first. You got not Okay, here's the, I got my answer. If I was the head coach, I'm picking Bryce Young. 
hundred percent. There's not a question in my mind. However, I'm not stupid. I know that that man right there in that picture, Frank Reich, wants CJ Stroud probably, just because of size. Using historical data, the dude's always had a quarterback that's like six three or above. Bryce Young doesn't fit that. But yes, if it was me personally, I'm picking Bryce okay. all day. Yeah. Um. I I pretty much agree. I I've been on. The, you can ask CK. Well, you've been in chat too. I've been on the CJ bandwagon, the train for for months. I I'm a huge advocate for going and getting cj i I love cj um so i'm gonna be happy if we get cj i'm not against bryce young but there's been talks that carolina liked bryce young so if they get him i ain't against it but it's like i think i said it last week if bryce young was 6'4 245 generational generational would be thrown around when talking about him 100 percent. yeah oh yeah he's too good and it's only because of his size and it's like, yeah. well, how many QBs have panned out with his size? I mean, I get it. That's a, that's a decent argument. But come on, man. You it's also, also comes down to you've got to protect these guys, too. You could also argue more QBs have failed when they're 6'4", 6'5", because there's more of them. Like, more have failed than have succeeded when they're 6'4", 6'5", too. Yes, it's a higher number, more quantity to quality type things. But listen, Bryce Young. I don't like whenever you look at a guy and the only negative you ever hear is, oh, he's 5'10, whatever. It shows you how good he is at everything else to still yeah. be considered QB1. Whenever it's that, whenever size is that big of a deal, he's that good. I don't hey, know. I'm, like, I'm, I don't, who, if we get either one of them, I'm good. You're, they, you're sitting, you're up. sitting at number one right now. So we went from, Last week, oh man, maybe we'll get maybe we'll get AR if he falls. Maybe we can trade up to Arizona's pick and just get the third best QB because Indianapolis is going to do this. Uh, uh-uh, uh, not no more. I, I'm done with all that now. You're sitting at one. They've already talked about it before. If you if you want your guy, go get him. You now you're in position to go get him. Does it suck what we lost? Absolutely. No one likes trading away their players, man. Yet, you know, I know Cody, you're a big fan of Jordan Love, but it's at the end of the day, it sucks you're going to trade away Aaron Rodgers because he's still Aaron Rodgers. And oh, yeah. he's been with him for 17, 18 years. He's one of the greatest of all time, passing wise, just QB wise altogether, but definitely one of the greatest passers I've ever seen play. And it sucks, man. You don't want it, it sucked when we released Cam, Luke retired, all that. Devontae, Jordy. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Devontae. And everybody was like, ah, yeah, with Devontae. Da, da. It, that sucks, man. At the end of the day, it sucks. The CMC trade hurt like hell. Yep. But at the end of the day, man, this this is why. This, this is why you do it. Because now, and that's, you know, and everybody's like, well, what if we trade for Lamar? What if we get, a, get another bridge QB, an, an older veteran like a Jimmy G? All that is now off the table. You're going to, you're still going to bring in a vet, but it's going to be, a cheap vet, and for what I'm hearing, they're rework. They're talking to Sam Darnold, so they may bring Sam back for a season. Yeah. Now, oh, oh, sorry, what? I was gonna go back to a to a point that you were making earlier um, about like you know it sucking and stuff like that with the whole Devonte thing. Uh, Packers fans, if you're upset still over the Devonte trade, I just want you to realize that the Devonte trade turned into. Quay Walker, uh, and I believe it also turned into Christian Watson. So yep. you, you can't be – and Devontae Wyatt. So you, you can't really be too upset. That's 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 what I don't think people understand. They're like, well, you're not going to replace an all-pro wide receiver. At the time, you're right. You're not going to. But what's to say that you trade away your pro bowl, all-pro wide receiver, Devontae, and Christian Watson can't become the same thing? That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Pretty good at football, but but it's but it's like any in Panther fans that are upset now about still upset about the CMC and still and now are you know highly upset about DJ. I get it. I, I've been in the same boat. I'm I'm not happy we lost DJ more. But now you have the chance to go and get whoever you want. 
You ain't got to worry about the Colts. You ain't got to worry about anybody. You are where you are. And the last head coach wouldn't have done this. The last head coach would be sitting at nine, and we'd probably take Brian Branch. Because why not? Or we'd have took a guy from Temple. Oh, not we'd have took Sika Ika because he's from Baylor. Del. So, you know, no, no, man. Like, Frank Wright come in, they said, you need to get, I'm sure David Tepp, this is why Frank Wright got this job, this right here. Because I'm sure they said, what are you going to do about QB? He said, I'm going to be aggressive, and I'm going to go get the guy I want, and I'm, gonna, I'm not getting a vet. Unless I'll bring a vet in, but I'm not, I'm not bringing a vet in to to put my job on the line for. Because now with Anthony Richardson and Will Levis, there was less of an argument on why they could be day one starters. Like they they were more than likely were going to sit a year. Would CJ and Bryce should they sit a year? It's arguable. Will they? Not they won't sit the entire year if oh, they if one of them. If, if either one, yeah, if either one of them sits at all, and if, that's if they thing. sit, it's like till what week four, maybe. That's what I'm saying. You may maybe. sit for two, two to three weeks. No. Just, and that's just because maybe neither, neither of them are going to sit. I can promise you. Oh no, we, we don't think so. I'm oh, just I don't saying. Think so. like, just, you know, like maybe if they play like. I, I think that was the issue. Was they were like they looked at the QBs, the vet QBs on the board, and were like, "Is there really anybody out there that we're okay with getting that?" Would have took the vet men because Jimmy G wasn't taking a vet minimum. Now Jimmy G wants some bread. That's a joke. Um, is the there Raiders, any? The Raiders might give to him. Well, Raiders probably is stupid, but whatever. I don't care anymore. Um, <laughs> well, so are the Giants, but here we are with Daniel Jones making 160 million. So exactly. But um, man. Hey, I, I'm happy. I'm excited. You, you, I mean, we're, I'm we're, if if you lost DJ Moore, but you're gaining your QB one for the next 15 years, let's just hope. Are you really, are you gonna be mad for those 15 years? No. You know, so right, like, let's say Bears fans out there, well, we fleeced the Panthers. Okay, who you did? Sure, whatever. No. Now if. If we're in the playoffs this year and you're not, or if we become Super Bowl contenders in two or three years because our quarterback is, let's say he's really good and he's a baller and we replace DJ Moore kind of quick, which a little kind of easy to do. Um, Especially in this who, draft. Who who really got fleeced? Well, I, mean. I can tell you from personal experience, the Bears are at the bottom of the uh, division <laughs> every year. So, yeah. they they fleece themselves becoming an organization. Um, I don't know if you knew that. I, now, now I'm, I'm gonna tell you this: the I, the NFC North is is gaining is getting some good people in there. I, I don't know if anybody's gonna be like pure dog crap this year in the NFC North. I think oh, no, all the, the teams are gonna be pretty good. I don't know, man. Bears might win five games. That's pretty high for the Bears. I give them three. Bears still suck. <laughs> Um, oh man! But I also got um, a lot, uh, got a lot to say about some people on Twitter. By the way, oh um, here we go. So a lot of I don't know if it's Bears fans. They're clearly not Panthers fans because they know absolutely nothing about our roster at all. Sitting there going, "Oh well, yeah, you traded all, you traded away the ninth pick to the first pick." Okay, pick swap by the way. So you didn't really give up anything. You gave up a first round pick, a second round pick, and a second, and two second round picks, and DJ Moore. Right? Gone, gone, gone. Who cares? Not me. But these people sitting here going, well, you gave up all this stuff. How are you going to protect your quarterback? This is like Daniel Jeremiah saying we need to draft an offensive lineman. We already fixed our offensive line. All we got to do is re-sign Bozeman, bring back a couple older vets, maybe draft a guy late, which, by the way, if you didn't realize, to all the Panthers fans sitting there going, we gave away every, everything away. So we have the first pick. We still have a second-round pick. We have a third-round pick. We have, I think, Two fourth-round picks. No, we have one fourth-round pick, two fifth-round picks this year. Next year, you have a second-round pick, a third-round pick, a fourth-round pick, two fifths, two sixths, a seventh. 2025, we have a first, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, two sevenths. So everybody's sitting there going, oh, you gave away all these draft picks to move up number one. 
this year is the only year we don't have a full draft. And, it, and we're one pick short. That's it. And then you have $22 million in cap this season, not counting you're probably going to do something with Shaq's contract, whether it's a cut, whether it's a restructure. You're probably going to cut Pat F. line because he sucks. Then you have $156 million next year. 156. Now, yeah, it's going to get cut down because all the free agents and Brian Burns, but who cares? You're probably going to have, like, terrible estimates, 70 or 80. Oh, wait. Now you can pay a receiver to come replace DJ. This season, you're still going to have, like, 30, 40 mil. You can go sign some more free agents. Paris Campbell. Paris Campbell. Jacoby Myers. Uh, uh, Jarvis Landry. Jarvis OBJ. Landry. OBJ Chark. OBJ. Linebacker. You could, you could maybe Lillard. somewhat look into seeing what Arizona would want for D. Hopkins. I'm yeah, not saying we that. should, but I would a be like, I, I would. I ain't giving the second round pick for a 31 year old wide receiver. It ain't happening. That you have to pay. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Absolutely not. That's not happening. So, yeah, for everybody saying, I like, oh, he's going to get a new contract. That's what they're, they're thinking. That well, they won't they're, they're stupid. So they also think Colin Murray's their savior at QB also. So, we'll just whatever. So, yeah, but. for everybody saying the Panthers ruin their, their future, make sure you do your research before you start calling crap because you look like a bunch of dumbos. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Dumbos. Yeah. Yeah. Dumbos. Um, so, I've got this one. Joe Banner said, Carolina did what they needed to do. I actually think they underpaid and solved their QB problem. I applaud Carolina. He's right. He's he's, he's 100% right. We did underpay because they're like, we gave up two first-round picks. Wrong. What? You swapped first-round picks, and then you just sent them one. Ryan Pohl said he could get three first-round picks. That means you was going to swap first and send three first-round picks. Yep. Plus whatever else. He said he had Absolutely. What do you say on that one interview? He's That's like, I got 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026 first round picks. I lay on my desk. That's what I'm saying. That was cap. That was that was a lie. Yep. He, and he did he did exactly what a good GM should do. He said, "Man, I got four. I got four first sitting on my desk. I want to see what people thinking." No, he didn't. I bet he didn't have a contract offer. I bet he didn't have nothing on his desk. He's just talking out his rear end because that's what a good GM does. Mm-hmm. So he, that's that. Hey, it is what it is. And I, you know, but we did not get fleeced. We we underpaid because if you look at what other teams have sent for, like Jared Goffs and all them other people that that have been traded up for, we we didn't pay as much as what people think. We yep. really did. And if you guys are big Panthers fans, you obviously know who Cody from C three is. And he's been talking about how much it's going to cost and everything like that. Oh, it's going to be too much. Even he said, who in their right mind thinks the Bears fleeced the Panthers? We really only gave up one first-round pick. I was, and he said, I was expecting to give up way more than, than for the top spot. That's a, per, that's a Panthers fan who was sitting there arguing because he didn't want to give up. all. He thought it was going to take three firsts, two seconds, all that. All of us did. You got it for one first two seconds and a replaceable position. Love DJ, but again, we see day two, day three receivers come out every year and light up the NFL. You, I get, it takes skill. I mean, you have to have a good scouting department and all that, but, you know, you get my point. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about day two receivers, man. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You got Christian Watson. But if you think about even, I would say, better receivers right now than Christian Watson – AJ Devontae Brown, Adams, DK Metcalf, Devontae Adams. There's been many day two, day three wide receivers. And even, yeah, oh, day three, yeah. Steve um, Smith. Steve Smith was a, what was he, like a fourth round pick? Something like that. Right? I should probably know I that, think, but I don't. Hey, what, wasn't Cooper Cup like a second or third? Oh, he was, yes, Cooper Cup he was. was a sixth, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's so. what I'm saying, man. Like, sometimes it's, just, it's not even about. Well, I got to get the top wide receiver. Yeah, I don't know, man. You know, and I, and this is where Carolina still has this, their second round pick this year at thirty nine. Actually, it's forty. So they have forty. So really? that's what. Yeah, it's forty. Um, Just forty. Yep. So they're sitting at forty. So it's like, what about you know? 
this is where if they fall, you're looking at your Jalen Hyatt, you're looking at Josh Downs, you're you know what I'm saying that's that's where you're that's the people that we could be looking at. And we've talked to Jalen Hyatt multiple times. So I, I would expect that could be our pick. And but I, I all I know is this when we do our live stream on draft night, man. I, oh, it's gonna it's be gonna get hot. It's gonna be hot. And if we at if, least if, if not the Right, yeah. If the Panthers do trade down, um, it'll be on draft night. Yeah. It'll be on draft night. It won't be. I, mean, I don't think it'll be before that. No, nah, it, 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 nah, uh, it would be one of those where it's like, that. that's the night where if, if Houston was really scared about us taking Bryce Young, and even though we don't tell anybody that we love both QBs, or like we really need Bryce Young. Hey, what will you? What will it take? Give me that two and twelve. All right, all right, fine. Just take it. Thanks, fleeced. That's a fleece. <laughs> two yeah, first, two and one. Nah. So I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, if we if we're gonna you know move it, then that's that's where it's gonna be. Yeah. Um, you, I don't. You guys got anything else? No, nah, I've just got. I'm not gonna say it. I'm just gonna let you guys read it. I don't just say. <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love it. Little, little bit of a shorter episode, but you know what, man? We talked about what we had to hit on. Uh, we're we're pretty excited over here from the Panthers fans, but I think we all are, man. We're so ready for the draft. It's not even funny anymore, man. All of us over here, old Pat, thank so. Yeah. I think we're uh, I think we're real excited to um, to see what happens. Even over here in Pack Country, man, we just you know what we're waiting for. We are waiting for the word on what. Hopefully, we'll hopefully in a couple week. days. I can't wait he to see what he, y'all get. He said he wasn't going to hold us hostage, uh, but free agency does start on Monday, so we shall see. Thirteenth is coming up. Hopefully tomorrow. Wednesday. Maybe something. Drops. Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Fifteenth. Yeah. Fifth. 15th, okay. Yeah, but them yeah. legal tampering the, um, period starts on Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so does um, Pro Days. Pro Days start 13th also Monday. So this, yeah. the next two weeks are going to be insane. Yep. All right. Well, everyone, this is uh, this is kind of the wrap-up from us. If you want to, you can obviously follow us on our social channels right here. Uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, this has been us at Pack the Bank. Thank you for joining us for another wonderful, wonderful week. As always, you can find us on YouTube here and uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, peace.